Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So like I said during my reaction to Love Sick Girls, I would be making a first listen to this album and there are eight tracks in total. Wait, let me just pull out the uh, track list really quickly. So we have How You Like That Ice Cream, Pretty Savage, Bet You Wanna, Love Sick Girls, Crazy Over You, Love To Hate Me and You Never Know. So obviously I have already heard How You Like That Ice Cream and Love Sick Girls. So they are five tracks remaining. So just really quickly, I know that many of us were maybe expecting more than just eight tracks, but I feel like at this point, you know what, I take it. <laughs> it's better than nothing. You know, I take this over nothing, if that makes sense. It's true that if it were, was up to me, I would have liked this album to have 10 tracks, you know, but like the girl said, you know, in multiples interview already, they are really focusing on, you know, this whole uh, qual quality of a quantity, which I get through that now that we have tasted this, you know, Blackpink being active and like having so much content this year. It feels like I'm slowly getting greedy, you know, and wanting for more. I am very grateful and happy for what we have now, but it's true that on the other hand, I'm also very like, I'm getting greedy, you know. I'm not saying that they should rush though, but I honestly feel that they can put out a lot more than what they have so far. So not saying that they should, but just say that this is what I wish would happen. So far, the response to Love Sick Girls have been incredible, which warms my heart so much because we have seen so much like negativity, backflash and everything from the past, you know, releases from Blackpink. And I get that, you know, music subjective and everything. Even if you're a fan, you know, I've mentioned this multiple times already, but even some blinks, you won't necessarily enjoy every song that they put out and I understand it. But it's true that lately there has been a lot of negativity, toxicity and everything. And I'm genuinely surprised and just like so freaking thankful to see the majorly, you know, positive response to this new song. I really hoped and wished that song would, you know, reunite everyone and it's currently happening, which, makes me beyond like happy right now. So that said, I will be reacting to the five remaining tracks. I for now have the lyrics version of the songs. Now I know a lot of those videos aren't accurate, but for now this is the only closest thing that I can get from like a translation to the songs and I want to be able to understand kind of so that i can actually give like my entire thought regarding the song you know and one last thing before getting into the reactions i will probably cut out some of the parts of my reactions during the video just don't want this video to be too long either so i hope you understand and with that being said let's just get started i'm just gonna go in the same order as the track list which means i'm going to be listening to prey savage which i've seen many people saying this was your their favorite in the album so we'll see all right prey savage let's go Why is this already just giving me attitude? <laughs> this is giving me attitude. Mm, you guys. <laughs> you already know. This is my song. Oh, this is my song. You know that when I stick my tongue out, I'm feeling things. <laughs> Your jealousy is a problem. Oh my lord, there. The lyrics. This thing, this is giving me life. <laughs> I'm gonna say it, but like, this might be one of my favorite out there. <laughs> Attitude. Oh, come on. Oh, my body just. Mm. Oh, this 
song. Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah. This song, <laughs> it slaps. This song is giving me every freaking thing that I like. You know, <laughs> I mean, again, if you know me, you know me. This is the type of music that I would listen to every freaking day because I need that boost in, you know, confidence. And this is what it's giving me. My hair is dead and it won't stop sticking up. I'm sorry. Um, yes. This song, the lyrics, the attitude, the confidence, the way they're calling out their haters. This is what I'm living for. We need more of this type of tracks with lyrics that are kind of like calling out the bullshit out of some people. They spit nothing but fact and truth and just realness. <laughs> In here, where's the lie? Insert Nicki Minaj, did I lie me here right now? Like my body recognizes uh, you know, bad bitch song before it even starts. And here, my body was just like reacting, you know, there's this like chemical thing going on, it's here. <laughs> like this honestly could have been the title track or like be released as a music video as well and I would have... Can you imagine a music video for this? I actually need a music video of the girls saying, we some bitches you can't manage. Can you imagine the surf? You know what, I'm gonna go as far as to say this is one of their best songs and we need more of this savage side of them because they're not singing about love and everything. I feel like a lot of people are tired of, you know, those regular love song type of thing and here they, they're, they're coming at you with confidence, with sass, with attitude and with all of, the, all of those lyrics spinning facts. Excuse me? We need more of this. Also, yeah, my body recognizes a whole song, kind of a kind of bad bitch song, when my tongue is sticking out and... Uh, <coughs> and not when I sneeze, I'm sorry. <laughs> but like when my tongue is sticking out, when the body rolls just come out naturally. And so, you know, oh, I, I speak with my hands. I talk with my hands a lot as well. This is what is giving me, you know, this song kind of gives me the idea of a snake, but like not in the the expression that we use on the internet like your snake not like that it's kind of like giving me the idea of like sneaking up to you you know so like even though the rhythm during the verses aren't like that powerful or whatever they're still freaking impactful first of all the lyrics the flow the way the girls just went about it the raps the bars <laughs> so it's kind of like the snake is like coming towards you and then the chorus is when it actually bites if that makes sense you know when they go savage like that it's when the snake bites does that make sense <laughs> pretty savage this is one of my favorite sight of blackpink honestly all right moving on we have bet you wanna and oh my god listen i to be totally honest with you i have never been a fan of cardi b to put it straight i don't listen to like American music anymore. Well, at least very little. And ever since that WAP song came out, I can't stop listening to it. I, I, even if I don't want to listen to it, it's playing in my head in the background. It's kind of like, all right. And never in a million years would I have expected Cardi to actually be in a song with Blackpink because it's kind of like two worlds that I thought would never collide because of how different they were. Because I suppose like Cardi is so, she's so like herself and she doesn't have a filter. So it's not something that we would necessarily link to Blackpink, you know, the, the type of song that Cardi is doing doesn't really fit with the image of Blackpink. So I was like surprised and I was like, okay, how? Are they gonna manage to make a song that is yet Cardi but also Blackpink, so like Bardi Pink, right? And apparently they asked Cardi not to swear, not to use like, you know, profanities or whatever. So this must have been very challenging for her. But like, I'm so curious to see how it will turn out because this is definitely one of the songs that are, will probably sound more uh, westernized, you know? So we had Ice Cream with Selena Gomez and now we have this one. Um, I wonder, I'm just curious. So that said, bet you wanna, let's just go ahead. Oh, her voice. Hips don't lie. <laughs> That's 
Jenny's voice. It feels like I'm watching a The Honey movie, do you know that? <laughs> this is probably the most PG lyric she ever sang. <laughs> I'm watching one of those, what is it? American Teen, teen Movie? High School Musical, oh my lord! No? Oh, her voice is stunning! She's a whole snack, she knows it. This is giving me so many good vibes, I love it. Oof. Wow! Jenny's lower register, is that how we say it? Voice? With Rose's higher note in the background was stunning. Damn, this song is better than what I would have expected. <laughs> it's kind of like, again, I came in not being able to expect anything because those two worlds are so different from one another that it's hard to expect what the song's going to be like or sounding like or how the chemistry is going to be in the song you know a lot of times for me at least what will determine whether a featuring works or not is how the chemistry works within the voices and everything and the vibe like the overall vibe and this to me was such a successful one i'm even surprised that i enjoy cardi's verse so much in here it's not as explicit as she usually goes but her voice fitted the song and I'm, I'm genuinely surprised. My hair won't stop <laughs> sticking up, oh my god. Ah, It's definitely very far from the idea of what K-pop sounds like. But that's why I say that Blackpink is a K-pop group that is international. So like, they make international music as well. I feel like mm, right now, describing them as a K-pop group only doesn't feel fair because that's not what they work is anymore so like they are definitely a yg k-pop group but they definitely have expanded they have definitely taken a step towards the american market and like the international market that's for sure and this is one of those songs where you can definitely feel it this is definitely one of those songs where i feel no touch of yg oh wait i'm just gonna check who worked on this track so teddy worked on this track but like a very short amount of the song I, I guess since he's the last credited I don't know how this works though please correct me if I'm wrong so most of the names in here are American I suppose you can definitely sense that in the song this song has no YG elements in my opinion at all like what I often say about a YG song is that they have this signature sound that pattern that is very you know unique to them and that you can recognize in a lot of YG groups and in here I have none of that not that I'm complaining because again it showcases that you know Blackpink is an international group now so so far out of the two songs we can definitely see the YG print and identity in the Pretty Savage and in this one we see the more western side of them and, their, and the music you know yeah because Pretty Savage absolutely was uh, produced written and everything by Teddy 24 in RT also Lauren in here Vince so those are mainly YG producers, you know, in black label producers, so it does make sense. And to me, this shows versatility, you know. Okay, moving on, we have Crazy Over You, which was written, produced and everything by mainly uh, a lot of YG producers as well. So yeah, curious to see how this is going to sound like. Let's go Crazy Over You. Oh girl. Oh shit. 
when she sings with her deeper voice though. Ooh. Is that a flute that I hear? What did I say earlier? What did I say earlier? Oh my god. You recognize whitey patterns in here. Don't you know I'm <laughs> Wow, damn. Seeing Jisoo's improvement in like everything, every aspect. It's like they all gain in confidence if that's even possible, but mainly just you like okay. This one is spicy as well, no? Ring the alarm. <laughs> The little things that they do with their voices when they kind of like suddenly just, you know, go higher in the pitch or whatever you call it, it's so attractive. I don't know why, I don't know how, but I just find it sexy, you know? <laughs> Anyways, you can definitely see, as I said a little bit earlier, you know, you can see, you can sense the YG pattern in here. It's definitely following the same pattern that we have seen recently, you know, with the drop. This one was so much smoother though. Like you, you saw it coming, but what is surprising is how smooth it is and how low it goes. Also, I'm sorry, I just need to mention the fact that they are comparing themselves to Snake in here. And what did I say in the first song that I reacted? What? What? Got the venom to dead him. To dead him, I caught. The plain words in here is so smart as well. This song is entirely in English, but the pattern is YG. And so again, it's kind of like two words are colliding, which is so freaking cool. Oh, so I already said this, but anytime they sing in English, you can definitely feel the sass and the confidence. They sound a lot more confident, a lot more sassy in English than in Korean. Okay, so next song we're going to be listening to is Love to Hate Me. And here again, we have a lot of producers and lyricists I'm not familiar with. The only ones that I know in here are 24 Vince and Teddy. Love to Hate Me, all right, let's go. She's still the, the starting fairy, huh? Her English voice. See her English voice as well, damn it. Ooh. Is it an all English again? Oh! Nah. They are booked and busy. They. Ooh. Oh. This is. <sighs> Tell them, girl. Oh. Yeah, they're too booked and busy. They don't have time for any men. Damn, is it me or like the line distribution restrictions are so good in here? Like overall? Okay, come on girl. Mm. 
Oh, this sends. This wait. Oh wow. You know what? This song I could easily see charting in the uh, in the American market. <laughs> If there were more songs like this in the Western American, you know, world, music world, I would probably still be listening to American music. This is, again, very far from what I would expect from a YG group to do, but it only makes sense for Blackpink to be doing this type of music and they do it well. Again, you could argue that this is only simply a love song, but what is truly demarking them from other typical k-pop love song to me is they have this western vision on that love song if that makes sense a lot of times i believe correct me if i'm wrong again but the way i see it a lot of love song in the k-pop industry have to do with you know her, her breakup and and where you feel sad and you feel remorseful you feel regret stuff like this right it's very rarely about getting over a breakup or like getting over not having a man or getting over like saying I'm too busy, booked and busy to actually like, you know, love you, whatever, you don't deserve me, stuff like this. It has been done in the past, obviously, I'm not saying that it has never been done. So like, let's take in comparison the lyrics of this song and um, Love Sick Girls. I feel like Love Sick Girls fit the, uh, what is it, the stereotypical love song lyrics almost that we could see in the K-pop industry, whereas this lyrics of this song would fit definitely more with the Western word, if that makes sense. I honestly really, really, really enjoy this one. All right, and last but not least is You Never Know, which this time is, what is it? Okay, so the lyrics, Lauren participated, is it the lyric? Texa. Okay, so Lauren participated in the song 24 as well. So this one, if I remember reading correctly, this was the song with very few instruments or whatever so that they could focus on the emotions of the girl's voice. So I suppose it is going to be very like, you know, vocal driven and just deep lyrics, I guess. Um, so yeah, am I ready to cry? Not really, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, you never know. Let's go. Okay, I don't want to cry really, but if you're gonna start like this... Singing Lisa. Jenny's singing those lyrics though. Damn the lyrics, holy crap. When the violin hit, you know. <laughs> it 
it's sad but it's so swag at the same time too <laughs> oh my god this song is like you cry but you so like turn up at the same time <laughs> ah this is ridiculous the lyrics man they they hit kind of differently knowing how much hate how much ungrounded and founded things are said about them and like you know this unfamous Denny's lazy thing I, I feel like this song kind of I don't know why but even if I'm I was not the one being targeted you know during this time this hot time and everything all the girls have received you know hate very a lot of, of amount of hate and I feel like through this song, even though I wasn't the one being targeted, I feel like it, it makes it, it is relieving so much of my chest for to see them being able to express themselves through this song almost. It's kind of like they're reassuring themselves, they are reassuring them in the from the past and from the future as well. It, it feels so personal and being able to get this off your chest almost reassures me if that makes sense like them being able to express their thoughts their feelings their emotions through a song through music through the lyrics like this the way they went about this here is so powerful almost and it hits differently because even though they were the target of something you know of the hate of negativity toxicity and everything a lot of us can relate, you know, you don't have to be a celebrity to be the target of hate or bullies or whatever, you know, like if you can't relate, then thank God, honestly, if you can't, if you haven't gone through stuff like this, then thank God for you, you know, but like for those who can relate to this song and everything, we all feel the same. Having the girls sing it kind of like is giving us a voice almost, you know, so like it's reassuring to see that they have gotten this out of over their, over their chest oh my god it's getting me choked up because like this is the type of lyrics or song that helps many people i feel like and i i needed to hear this they probably needed to have this out as well and um yeah it feels good you know honestly when jenny sang the first line of the of the what is it? The chorus, you know, you never understand if you're not standing in my shoes. You never know unless you walk in my shoes. Like on my channel, I try to spread positivity as much as possible because there is already so much negativity and I know that I can't bear this negativity, which is why I try to avoid it as much as possible. And I want this, you know, community to be as toxic city less <laughs> toxic less as possible if that makes sense because we have seen in the k-pop industry most specifically i'm talking about the k-pop industry here but obviously it just goes beyond the k-pop industry the weight that your words have the weight that your comments have on someone's life on someone's day on someone's psyche on someone's mental or anything really can be much more than what you imagine like it's still mind-boggling to me that we still have to educate people on you know be mindful of your words be aware that your words have consequences after everything that we have seen happening in the k-pop industry and you know i love this community i love the k-pop fans i love k-pop you know the community and everything but sometimes there are just something that irritates me and infuriates me so much and one of those things is when you know a lot of people are going to be preaching yeah you know your words have consequences and everything and then like not only a, a week after they're going to be spewing hate on you know this or that idol like do you not learn that your vo your, oh my god i'm getting like so frustrated i'm getting worked up because it's definitely something that i have seen you know happen so many times countless time already and every time we always come back to the same conclusion of yeah oh yeah but you know your words have consequences jesus christ how many times do we have to say it a lot of people apparently think that hating being hateful is a personality trait it's not you're just hateful and blackpink i believe have been the target of so much hate and 
it doesn't come from just me being a fan of them, you know, it's objectively they have received an incredible, ridiculous amount of hate. But was all of that hate granted? Was all of that hate deserved? That's my question. Like that's, I, I'm genuinely asking right now, like all of the hate that they have received of pa those past years, was it all deserved? Was it like, did you have to go this far? You know, how far are, are those people willing to go to make someone feel miserable is my question because at the end of the day a lot of people are forgetting that you know those idols who are here to entertain us they are people they are human beings with emotions and whenever you say something even though you think they it won't you know affect them it won't necessarily get to them you know who knows basically who knows so i want for everyone not not only the the haters or whatever but just everyone myself included to be as mindful as possible before just even before commenting something because like yeah the weight of your words you don't realize they can have consequences you know so i just beg 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 everyone to truly be mindful and careful about their words and everything you know i'm sorry i went on a tangent right there but i felt like this was something that i have been i've been wanting to say for so long it, having the girls actually talk about stuff like this sing about stuff like this is such like a ball of fresh air because i feel like in the k-pop industry we don't talk about stuff like this as much as we should it has been done you know card or like uh dreamcatcher has mentioned those type of issues but having it done at Blackpink's level is so refreshing because yes, call them out, you know, call them out, but like do it in a classy way, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I'm very relieved to see this. This was really needed for them first and for us as well the fans so and for everyone basically who needs to hear this. Alright you guys, I know this was a long video, I'm sorry. I I tend to go on a tangent most of the time because my mind is all over the place, you know, I want to be able to describe my feelings as best as i possibly can like the way i receive the songs and everything so i hope you didn't mind and honestly i'm very very happy about this album it is very versatile it showcases the girls you know talent and skills how you like that for instance it's a hype song yes but it doesn't necessarily allow all the girls to actually showcase their full potential if that makes sense whereas songs like this one definitely showcases their skills and talent if that makes sense so i'm glad that we are able to see both sides of them in this album because that truly proves to many many people that they are not just the drop in empty choruses girl group you know and also it's not just about love which a lot of people have been tired of hearing and, and i get you really so i truly enjoy how this album is you know covering multiple topics in in different ways every time there is not one track on this album that resembles the other they are all pretty unique to themselves and that's the range that i have been hoping for you know i think a lot of us were expecting something like this from them for quite a while already because i mean we have heard multiple songs that were kind of like similar every time you know this pattern a lot of people at some point were disappointed because they kept on seeing the same pattern done over and over again so like i think the main reason why a lot of people felt like the three past songs of Blackpink have been so repetitive and everything is because well first of all I probably think they were like in the pattern that they were producing they were pretty similar however I wonder if there were other songs in between you know it would have felt less repetitive I wonder it's just a question that I'm putting out there to kind of like start a conversation if you are you know interested in joining this conversation please feel free to leave your um, opinion down below as long as we are you know respectful as always there you go all right so that is it for me today in this video thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed don't forget to subscribe to my channel and i will see you in the next video bye bye